everybody! It's Matt from Casual Riders. Today, once again, I'm here with my fiance. Hello, YouTube! Who is busy driving me around, and we are off to Suzuki South because my parts for my bike have finally arrived from Japan. It's been like six weeks or eight weeks, it feels like forever, since I've been on the bike. So we're on our way to go get the parts, go pick them up. But when I fell, I actually ripped a big giant hole in my butt so on my riding pants. So I'm going to go and have to get a new pair of riding pants. So we're also off to Barker Secondhand Store to go see if I can go pick up some used motorcycle gear because I'm cheap like that. <laughs> we're taking a little bit of a drive. We're playing a little bit of ingress and we're on our way to Barker Secondhand Store so that we can go collect some new bike gear some new pants and some boots. Right, so we've been to Barker's second-hand store and we walked out empty-handed. I think it's just because I'm being too fussy about the gear. I mean, they had boots that were just way too big. They had size 13s and I'm like a size 11, so I can push it to 12. And everything else was just too small. It was 10 or 10 and a half and my feet couldn't even get in the boots. But the problem with the pants was that I was looking more for leathers over getting another pair of textiles because if I do have another slide the leathers will at least be strong enough to withstand it and I don't have to replace it after one drop. This is the issue that I've had with my textile pants is I fell once and they've got big giant holes in them. So I had a look at the leather pants and they had a nice pair of Alpine Star leathers over there but the problem with it is that the zip that allows you to join it up to your jacket is the wrong size so I've got this little short zip and they have this full waist zip now what this zip allows me to do yes I said zip a lot in that sentence what this allows me to do is to actually attach my jacket to my riding pants so that if I fall on the motorcycle when the jacket lifts up it gets pulled back by this zip that's connecting the jacket to the pants so that I don't get stuck with road rash. Now anybody that's ever fallen off a skateboard or a bicycle knows that road rash is like very unpleasant. Now imagine doing that at four or five times faster than what you would have on a bicycle. Like come on let's be realistic nobody wants that kind of a thing. So I don't know maybe I'm just being too picky no, I don't think you're being picky, my love. I think it's you're being more safe than picky. There's a difference. But yeah, in agreement, safety first. Like yeah, safety first. Some people will think it's pathetic that I'm so conscious about safety, but you know, at the end of the day, I ride because I love to ride, not I and mean, I want to stay safe. Yeah. And then I looked at I looked at full body leathers, but. There was one that fits my body perfectly. Nice Alpine stars also. But you can't stand up straight. You're not supposed to stand up straight in leathers. <laughs> it's made for you to be in the hunched position. Um, but it's just such a mission to get in and out of. Like I thought I could probably live with trying to put leathers on every day. Um, but doing it once in the shop, it, it was just way too difficult. It was 
it was so time consuming and I actually needed help to get out and I, I can't do that on the daily so because of that I've neglected to buy full body leathers and instead we're now on our way to track Mac to go and have a look at some boots which we're gonna have to buy new no. so we went to Barker we were like we don't like what we see we then went to track Mac and we got myself a nice pair of boots some uh, RST boots with some toe sliders and proper ankle support so that was pretty much the two things that I was really looking at on the bike because when I'm riding I tend to scrape my foot pegs on the ground and so a toe clip is actually quite an essential part of my riding requirements um, so anyways I got myself a nice pair of boots and then we decided to go back to Barker mm -mm, mm -mm. We were looking at the pants at Track Mac and the lady turned around and said that she knows a really good guy that can alter pants. That can alter pants. So, so we, we went, went back, back to Barker and got the leather pants so yeah, that we can go and get them altered. got it. <laughs> oh, the tag for the thing went missing and they couldn't like find the tag nor could they find it in the catalog and they're like, are you sure you guys got this? And we're like, bro, it was there. We saw the price tag. So anyway, we... We've got the pants, but we're waiting for them to sort out their logistics behind it. I don't know how the tag disappeared off the pants. And it wasn't even on the floor, which was strange, because if it came off when you were trying on the pants, we would have seen the tag on the floor. So, very mystery. Oh, I feel like we just shoplifted. <laughs> no, <laughs> we got an invoice and everything. We never shoplifted. On YouTube, we did not shoplift. <laughs> so anyway, we've got this pants now. Now we're off, we're now finally going to Suzuki South to go and get my things. You missed the right hand turn, by the way. You never told me. This, you right weren't looking turn. at the GPS. It's okay. I told you I wasn't following the GPS. I was following you. Yeah. So, anyways, we're on our way now to Suzuki South. At long last, we're going to go get my foot peg mount, and <clears> then <throat> we are going to finally put everything back together. It's been five hours on the road already we're exhausted I'm it's frustrated been with drivers drama drive. but it is what it is anyways we'll catch you later Alrighty guys, so we got back from our errands to Suzuki South, to Barker and to Track Mac and we are now working on the bike. We are going to replace the footrest mount bracket thingy. We're going to swap that out with the new one which I picked up from Suzuki South yesterday. So let's do it. Oh, this five minute job just turned into a two hour job. 
Uh uh, two hours. I can't do this without a press because you have to press this in and you've got to press it in straight. I legit thought this thing came with these rubber mounts because that's how it looked like in the parts diagram. Okay, well, it's not happening, so. Sorry, YouTube. Looks like I'm without a bike for another week. I'm disappointed now. I'm also disappointed and we just don't have the time to sit and fiddle with it now. I think the new ones will be easier to put in. No. They just need to be pressed in. Because a press can apply pressure evenly on this whole ring. The problem is I'm hitting it in the center so if there's like extra friction here it just gets bent sideways. So who's got a press? Nobody that I know of. I knew of one person in Edenville who had a press. Who else can go? Who's got a press? I guarantee nobody here has got a press. Nobody here works on cars. There is that guy up the road. That did your welding for you? No. Yeah, we, we walk the dogs. Mm -hmm. He's got all those cars in his driveway. He's always forever working on cars at his house, in his garage. Maybe he has a press. Okay. So you want to get in the car and go and see if we can... Well, we should do that then when we on our way to Clicks. Maybe we can ask a dude for help. If he's working... Like, I don't want to wake him out of bed or something. But if he's there working on cars, then fuck yes. Let's get masks. Let's get going. Okay. Let's do it. Let's go and ask a stranger for help. <laughs> <laughs> this is South Africa after all. We've got uh, some very friendly people here. So let's see. Super excited! So, good news. Super excited. The uh, backyard mechanics that um, that we see when we walk our dogs every afternoon, they actually were able to help us. They didn't have a press though. But they made um, a plan. But we made a plan with a bench vise. So what we did was we actually ended up having to grind off the old foot mount in like three different places so that we could remove the bushings they were such um, and then what they did they used the bench vise to press the bushings into the new footrest which is freaking awesome they are absolutely like legends if i could put them on status of zero to 100 they're somewhere in the millions because the the gents that helped us out were really great they were so gentle and everything uh, oh they were super gentle like they freaking taped up the footrest with masking tape just so that it wouldn't get scratched by the press and like I would have just been like you know whatever just put a cloth there it's fine they were like really thorough about what they were doing which is fantastic so we didn't film anything there because it's like a family business and all of that yeah hardcore so like we didn't that's want one of the crazy things in South their, Africa though yeah we didn't want to invade their privacy by filming anything but we really impressed and it was amazing how they helped yeah. us. Yeah, so they helped us they out. They dropped everything they were doing and they helped us. Yeah. South Africa is amazing. <laughs> Everybody that wants to go to other countries because it's better, you got to just go look through the grind to find the gold. Yeah, absolutely. Because these men were gold. Yeah, these, these gents really helped us out and made it awesome for us. So we're running some more errands, got a lot to do, got some more ingress to play. Um, we've got another community day coming up so we're on our way to sort all that out now and from there oh, oh. sorry <laughs> from there we will continue with assembling the parts on the bike okay so we returned back from the guys that helped us press the bushings in so we got that ready we're gonna mount that back on the bike like so and then touch <laughs> the, the cleanest part on the bike <laughs> <laughs> attach the master cylinder, attach the springs, which might be a little bit of a challenge, but we like a challenge, um, and just take it from there.
I'm enough truth. I mean, she should spot fine. It's expected. She hasn't started in forever. Yeah. Oh, damn. is hot so. so yeah I adjusted the switch for the brake light and I headed off to the parking lot for a little bit of practice probably about 15 20 minutes and I could immediately tell just how out of practice I have been over the past six to eight weeks uh, the bike feels very heavy I was tired very quickly as a result um, but I can't wait to be back on the bike I'm glad I went out and did a little bit of practice and Tomorrow is back to the daily commute. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I really do hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to tell us anything, leave a comment down below. If you want to keep watching these videos, subscribe to the channel and hit that notifications bell so you get updates of any of our future videos. Thank you for watching. Until next time, ride safe.